children can be dismissed. Hallelujah. If you will turn with me to 1 Kings 18, starting in verse 41. 1 Kings 18, starting in verse 41. As we were worshiping the Lord, I was thinking about this. Some people might not be used to what we just did this morning, but that's called pressing through. And the Lord spoke to my heart, Angela, press in, press past, under pressure. Press in, press past, under pressure. You know, the Lord will give us a promise, but then there's a process until the promise is fulfilled. And the Lord in this story, as we read through the scripture, promises the rain. He promises a move of his spirit, but there was a process that Elijah went through from the promise to the fulfillment of the rain. And this morning was just a little bit of a taste of what that looks like to press in, press past, under pressure. I don't know about you, but life has thrown some curveballs at us these past couple of years. And I believe that the Lord is teaching his people during this time to press in, press past, under pressure. And you can be like, well, what does that exactly mean? Pressing into the Lord, believing his word, not being shaken by our circumstances or our situations, but believing God is going to send the rain. I feel like the way that we felt God's spirit is just a little bit of a sprinkle of what God wants to do and the outpouring of his spirit. And I'm believing that we're all going. We're all going. I want to go in with each one of you. And I want to see God fill this house with more and more and more and more. So if you would turn with me to 1 Kings 18, 41. We're going to go to verse 45. It says, And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of an abundance of rain. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, and he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said to his servant, go up now. I'm going to stop there real quick. Go up now. If you walked in the door this morning with a pressing need, I suggest you get up and go up now and ask the Lord for what you desire, what you, the need actually is. So many times we wait and we wait and we don't go to the Lord. How many times have we, there's been a need and then we don't go to the Lord with the need? Right, right. Yep, he said, get up and go up now. Now is the time for you and your family, your children, your grandchildren to receive what God has for you. Yes. No yes. time like the present. Hallelujah. He said to his servant, go up now. Look towards the sea. And he went up and he looked. And he said, there is nothing. Mm. How many times have we went to the prayer closet? <laughs> How many times have we gone to the Lord and said, Lord, you said to go. You said to come. Sabrina gave the word this yeah. morning and yeah. interpreted. There is nothing. Yes, yes. I, I don't see it, Lord. But there's a sound in the spirit that the Lord is pressing upon his people that says the rain is coming. The rain is coming. I've given you a promise of rain and the fulfillment of that promise is coming. 
you've been praying for. Right. Your prayers are different than my prayers. And your needs are different than, uh, than my needs. Yes. But God has given you a promise. And I want to tell you this morning. Don't quit. Get up and go again. Yes. Get up and look again. He said there is nothing. And he said go again. Seven times. Side so note. That's the number of completion. Yes. And it came to pass. At the seventh time. He said. Behold. There ariseth a little cloud. Out of the sea. Like a man's hand. And he said go up. Say unto Ahab. Prepare thy chariot. And get thee down. That the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind. And there was a great rain. There was a great rain. And Ahab rode and went to Jezreel. Hallelujah. 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 Press in, press past, under pressure. Mm. This morning the Lord is given us a promise of an abundance of rain. What God is about to do in his people is greater than we could ever have imagined. And I believe that if we keep pressing and we keep believing and we keep going, you know, like, this sounds so simple, but when you're in the process of the pressure, it is not that simple. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That's right. But God is producing something in us. An exceeding weight of glory. So what did I come to talk to you about this morning? The process of pressing in pressure. The process of pressing in pressure. And I believe there's three things that the Lord wanted me to just go over. And that's one, the position that we're in. Meaning what is occupying our view? Your position. What is occupying our view? What are we looking at? And the posture of our heart. Meaning the attitude of our heart. See, because what we look at, what is in our view, will affect the posture or the attitude of our heart. If you're looking and we're looking at our circumstances and our situations and the other person and that and this, then it will affect the attitude of our heart. But if we're looking at Jesus, if we're looking at God's word, if we're presenting ourselves in worship, if we're pressing in and pressing past, our attitude of heart will believe, God, I believe you. Yes. Yes. God, you are able. Yes. This situation looks dead and buried, but you already handled yes. dead yes. and buried. Hallelujah. There is a power that is in us that is greater than ourselves. That God wants to produce something in us. And that is our the attitude of our heart. But then he wants to pour out his spirit continuously yes. in yes. our lives. We can experience something this morning and say, man, Lord, that was wonderful. But he wants to constantly yes. do that in our lives. Continuous flow of his spirit that we could keep going and going and going under the pressures of life. He didn't say we wouldn't have trouble. That's right. 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 He said you will have trouble yes. in this world. Amen. But peace I leave with you. Peace I give to you. Some people can look at us and say, how are you traveling under such a weight of pressure? Why are you still smiling? Why or how can you even get up in the morning? But we can say, my God is able. He is able for I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. I feel like that promise was ringing in Elijah's heart as he traveled through the journey. But wait. See, there's pressures on every side. But he says, but wait, for in my spirit, I may not see it, but I hear the sound. I hear the sound of my children coming yes. through. I hear the sound of my family coming yes. through. I hear the sound of this church building being filled. I hear the sound of my healing coming. I hear the sound of my provision. 
move of the spirit happening in Elijah that got him to continue to move forward. But I'm going to lay a little background for you so you can see the condition of the people at the time. So real quick, at this time, in this season, when God gave Elijah this promise of rain, Ahab was king. And Ahab was not a godly king. It says he wrought evil in the sight of God. He worshipped many gods, and he was married to Jezebel, who killed many prophets of God. So it was a time and a season of life where evil was waxing worse and worse. Where good was being called evil and evil was being called good. Can, can we look at that today? <laughs> can you see that today? Can we see what's going? Do we have eyes to see today that that's exactly what is taking place today? It said that they worshipped many other gods. And he was under this leadership. But then, and then you have Jezebel, Jesus, who was killing off all the prophets of God, trying to shut the truth down. Yes, yes, yes. That is the tactic. I'm going to try to slow down because I'm a really quick speaker, but I feel like I need to lay some groundwork here. That is what is happening in the church today. The enemy is trying to shut the truth yeah. down and trying to get us so discouraged that we cannot receive what God has to say to us today. It's getting us caught up in fads and agendas and things that are going on when God is just saying, no, let's, let's, come, let's come back to pressing in, pressing past under pressure. See, that's what they were doing in the book of Acts. They were all in the upper room, seeking the face of God, and God began to move in a mighty and a powerful way. But God always has a man or a woman. So we have, we have this wicked generation. We have sin waxing worse and worse. We have a woman and a spirit that is trying to shut the mouth of the prophets of God and the truth of the gospel from moving forward. But then we have Elijah. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank, Thank God. God for Elijah. Yes. Thank God for men and women that will believe God you, despite with the signs of the times and what is going on. But I do want to say this. There was Elijah's, but then there were the people of God that began to follow after what the leadership Ahab was doing. Yes. So we not we are not to be deceived as God's elect. That we follow after and trust and begin to trust in things that are false securities. Yes. And I think we went through a little taste of that during COVID. Mm. Honestly, we've lost people, we've lost loved ones, we've lost houses. We lost jobs. We lost material goods. We lost even church. Yeah. Yeah. We come into church for a season. So I feel like the Lord is preparing his people to not trust in things that will give you a false safety. Right, right. Amen. And that's these people at the time. We had Elijah that was willing to believe and trust God. For the abundance of rain. But then we had the people that were walking the fence. We had those that weren't too sure. We had those that their faith was being shaken. And then they began as their false securities began to crumble. They began to go in another direction. They began to trust in other things and other means. Yes, yes. But Elijah is there. And I love this. Even when Elijah shows up on the scene, it's a divine appointment by the Holy Ghost. And I believe this morning is a divine appointment with the Lord to tell you, do not quit. Go again. Get up and believe him now. For I hear the sound of an 
abundance of rain. This man of God needed no introduction whatsoever. When he walked on the scene, the anointing and the presence of God followed him. God, let it be so with us. Let it be so that when we walk onto the job, the peace and the presence of God surrounds us. Let it be so when we are in the midst of financial ruin or whatever is going on, that the peace and the power and the presence of God follow us, sustain us, that the joy of the Lord be our strength because our God is in view and the posture of our heart is to continuously worship him and trust him and believe him. Amen. That our lives would be poured out for him, yes, for his kingdom and his glory. Yes. Did you know that we are bought with a price yes. that you're, you are not your own any longer? That God himself, the creator of heaven and earth, wants to use you as a vessel of yes. honor for his kingdom and for his glory. Yes, you are a conduit of his glory. Yes. You are a vessel that when you go onto your workplace, to come through right now. I am in the, Elijah was going to be 
faced with death itself because of Jezebel. But he said, I, he said, not my will, but thy will be done, oh God. But there was a promise of a sound of an abundance of rain. The spiritual and the physical condition at this time, because they followed after their own ways, God allowed a drought in the land, meaning that there was no water, and when there is no water, disease runs rampant. Right, right. It was dry, and there was a shortage of food. There was no substance. Nothing can develop in a drought. And how does that liken us to us as believers? If we are not trusting and focusing and believing and placing our faith in Christ and what he has done for us at Calvary, the spirit of God's hands are tied. He cannot work on our behalf and allow the Spirit of God to move. So there becomes a drought. When we place our faith in other aspects and other things or even ourselves, yes. we become dry. Help us, Lord. Now look, God can allow us to go through seasons of dryness, but it's all to press into. Yes. <laughs> it's all that we would believe him. It's all that we would know him as faithful during these times. And then the word of God says not only was there a drought, but there was a sore famine in the land. That word sore means violent hunger. Think about that. Think about the state and the condition of America. There is a sore, a violent hunger and longing for desires to be fulfilled you fill in the blank of what that looks like and what you've seen things on tv that used to be taboo years ago are normal today we are becoming desensitized as a nation and as a church the church first God wants a people that don't go after their own ways and their own longings and their own desires. Yes. I will say this. Before I was saved, anything that felt good or looked good or seemed good, I went for. God, help that not be us as a church. Yes. Yeah. That we would be led by the word of God. That we would line ourselves up with the word of God. Yes. God, what? Look, sometimes you're going to read something in the Word or hear something from anointed preaching and teaching and be like, there is no way I can measure up. That's right. There is no way right. that we can measure up. That's, right. That's why God does the work in us to bring us up to that Amen. place. And we need to position ourselves and believe Him. Keep sitting under the anointing of God. Keep believing. hunger 
and land. That means, listen, there is a spirit. We wrestle against, not against flesh and blood, but principalities and powers of darkness and wicked rulers of the air. That is Bible. Yes. There is another spirit that is not the spirit of God that is dry, is a driving force yeah. to get us to go in the wrong direction. You have the Holy Ghost yeah. as you believe, yeah. as you get saved and you give your heart to the Lord. And if, you ha if you're if you not saved this morning, let's get you saved Amen. this morning, okay? So we can all go to glory. But you get the Holy Ghost inside of you. The Holy Spirit now takes up residence inside of us and it is one that will uh, be be your alarm system yes. if I could say it that yes. way be an alarm system and we would be able to discern when the enemy is coming in and pressing in and get us to go in the wrong direction yes. getting us to believe a wrong mindset or wrong thinking Amen. he will detect there is an intruder around yes. your person Amen. the Holy Ghost will, de will detect for you. That is not truth. That is the wrong way. That is the wrong thinking. Let's get you back going in the right direction. And that's what the prophet of God was doing. In the Old Testament, the Spirit of God didn't live inside of them. He couldn't live inside of them until Jesus died on the cross and shed his blood for our sin. Then the Holy Spirit can now live inside. We have a better covenant, y'all. We have a better agreement with God. We can actually have a relationship with the Lord because the Spirit of God lives inside of you now. Yes. In the Old Testament, he just came upon men yes. and women. You have something greater. We have something greater, a treasure in these earthen vessels. Yes. That we should protect and defend. Yes. God, help us to be defenders of the faith. Yes, Lord. Defend your relationship with God when the intruder comes in and the Holy Ghost alarm system goes off and says, no, not that way. Yes. God, help us. Give us strength to continue in the direction and not go after the violent hunger that is produced. God in the heart of man. I'm not going to tell you when we get saved, we're going to be perfect because we are not. Right, Pastor Matt? That's right. We are not. We will be the first ones to say. Flaws, flaws. But there are bents in us that cause us to want to go in the wrong direction. Right, right. And you know what? The Lord is just saying, Lena is my roommate. Did she just do a great job on the clarinet? Amen. Yes. She can play that clarinet. Amen. <laughs> Lena, that right there, that needs to change so that we can bring it to him. Yes. Not that so you can sit under a weight of condemnation. Right. Right. Condemnation is a legal decree upon your life saying that you were guilty. Mm. But my word says that you are righteous because of the blood of yes. the lamb. Yes. Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness. You are, we are not righteous because of what we do. We are righteous because of what we believe. Thank you, Lord. Thank God. Amen. We all be in trouble. That's right. But there are still areas in our hearts and our lives, just like the children of Israel in this story. This is a warning, y'all. This is a warning to the church. Look, you can believe, be a believer in Jesus Christ and be headed wrong direction and God will send circumstances and situations to get our attention to say look that hunger that you feel only I can satisfy you keep trying to fill it over here but I'm telling you I am the only one that is able to fill the void in your heart yes. and as believers we can do that we can go and we can get off track but God will allow a drought and a famine in his mercy to get us back yes, on track. Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, that you do not leave us nor forsake us. You will not fail us. Hallelujah. So God allows this to take place. And we see.
We see it's all because, and I do want to point this out, 1 Kings 18, 18 says, And he said, I have not troubled Israel, but thou and thy father's house. And then that, you have forsaken the commandments of the Lord, and thou hast followed Balaam. I want to say this. As people of God, we can relinquish our commitment to Christ. Mm. We can reject the word of God. We can reject the prompting of the Spirit of God. We can reject anointed worship. We can reject the truth behind the pulpit. We can reject a friend that is coming to you to help you out, to say, come on, let's go. We can reject. I'll give you an example. You know how many times my mom came to me before I was saved and told me about Jesus? And I constantly rejected Rejected. Rejected. Seven years. Oh, God bless her heart. <laughs> seven years of rejecting her. But he said, go seven times. Yeah. Go seven times. And my mom, 12 years ago, seen me get saved <laughs> in jail and the power of God be filled in my life. And now 12 years later, here I am. <laughs> here I am. So don't quit. Don't quit. But it says that they forsake, they were to, they relinquish their commitment to God. They were committed to him. How many times do we see that in marriages? There is a commitment, there is a covenant that is made and then we choose, we have chosen, we have seen the choice to relinquish that commitment. And now I'm not saying there's no biblical evidence, okay, I'm not even going to go down that road. She's using it as an example. We can choose to walk away. Yes. But what if we chose to dig our heels in Amen. and allow God to do the work in both parties and allow God to heal and to mend and to renew? And what great testimony that could be. We can choose to relinquish our commitment. They renounce, they actually formally were proclaiming, I don't trust them anymore. How many times have we done that? Come on, in areas of our life. I'm not talking about in a hole. I'm talking about you've been waiting for a really long time and now you begin to say, I just don't think God's going to do it. He's done it for Pastor Matt because Pastor Matt's anointed and the presence of God is all over him. But he's not going to do it for me. That's a lie from the pit of hell because his promises are still yes and amen. And the sound of rain that he promised to Elijah is your promise and my promise today too. Amen. If you've been believing for healing, he's saying, look, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. If you're believing for your family to be renewed and restored, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. If you're believing for a new job or a new place, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. If you have been struggling with sin, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. There was a sound and a drawn. Keep going and do not quit. Yes. Do not quit. Do not relinquish your commitment to the Lord under the pressure of society and life today. Yes. Right. Stop watching the news and get in the word of God. Amen. Stop. Shut down the Instagram, the TikTok, and the Facebook, and let's get on our faces in the word of God. Who cares what Sally Sue said down the street? What is the word of God saying Amen. to us today? Amen. Thank you, Lord. What does God say mm -hmm. about our lives Amen. and about our children and the signs of the times and what is going on? Look, Pastor Matt, I love his preaching. I know that he's been teaching on Wednesday nights and sometimes it could be like, whoa. Right, Pastor Matt? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I love that because it's actually preparing us for what's ahead. The Bible says that his people perish for lack of knowledge. And I believe that we need to know something in order to go somewhere. Amen. We need to be prepared and equipped as a people of God. Because this scene right here, what was going on with Ahab and Jezebel, is happening today. Yes. <laughs> and are we going to be Elijah? Or are we going to be Israel? Amen. Help us. Lord. God, help us 
to believe and trust you and to keep going. Let's not forsake. Let's not relinquish what God has invested in us. Amen. God invested, you know, Robert is a great example of this because Robert has invested, actually personally invested in my life. Time, finances, just even building a gate for my dog. What a blessing. Yeah. Why do I say that? Because God invested his son on the cross yeah. that we could receive the blessings of God, the righteousness of God, the right. peace of God, you, the joy of God, the healing of God, the provision <clears throat> of God, the presence and power of God. He invested all, he bankrupted heaven so that we could receive and so we could move forward and that so we could be prepared for what was coming ahead yes Lord. god look we are in boot camp yes Lord. god is getting us ready for what is to come and if we can't walk with the footmen we are not going to be able to run with the horsemen God, help us to be ready and to be prepared. Thank you, Jesus. So real quick on this journey, you see the condition of the people. We see the sin that is running rampant. We see the truth that is being shut down. Then we see Elijah and we see his heart for God and his position in the Lord. But then and he, that Elijah was the one that did not forsake God. He did not go in the wrong direction, but Israel and the church as a whole was. Help us, Lord. And then God calls the man of God to the brook Cherith. And that word Cherith means separation. Mm. He called him into a place of two years of separation. Listen. As we get saved and continue on this journey, God is going to continuously separate us yes. from the things of this world yes. and the things that we used to do and the ways that we used to think and the people that we used to hang out with and the, the just being led and driven by that sore famine, that strong, violent hunger of our lives. He's like, look, we're not going to go that way this time. I want you to be separate. For my kingdom and for my glory. And you know what? God fed him with ravens and he drank from the brook for two years. You could feel like, I don't know what my life is going to look like if I allow God to separate me from all that I knew. I am from New Jersey. I, am in, I live in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He called me out of there to be separate for his kingdom and glory. Did I know what that was going to look like? Absolutely not. Did I know? I knew he would, but I didn't see it. So many times God separates us and moves us. And he said, look, I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to make a way even if I got to rain manna from heaven. Even if I, even, even I got to create a stream for you to drink it. You will not be without. That's right. That's right. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. Want that word want to me is I shall not lack any good thing. You will not lack when we follow after the Lord. Right. It's a lie when the devil will tell you you will not have no more fun in Christ. <laughs> now don't we have a great time? A great time in the Lord. You can have fun in Christ. Amen. You're gonna you just you can't even you can't be the way you were. That's right. You can't be the way you were. You can be better. Amen. The Holy Ghost wants to make us better. Better for his kingdom and better for his glory. But then the brook dries up. And the Lord, see, I'm talking about pressing. What do you think Elijah was feeling during those two years of being by himself? And sitting with God. And God providing for him. And God being faithful to him. I can imagine the pressure that Elijah was under. But I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Hallelujah. There's a process. There is a process that God has us going through. And all of a sudden he says, look, I want you to get up and I want you to move forward. And now that you're moving forward, I want you to meet up with a widow. Because there is a widow that is in need and her son is on the brink of dying. And I need you to show up at her house. And Elijah's like, ah, could you imagine? I'm like, 
Lord, where's the rain? You promised me the rain. How many times have we gone before the Lord over and over again and been like, okay, Lord, here I am again. Here I am, Lord. I've been praying for this. I've been crying out for this. And he's like, go to the widow. Go to, go to that brother or sister in the church and be a blessing to them. Because when we bless others, we get blessed back. Amen. Being a blessing to someone else is a blessing in itself. God, help us to be a blessing as the children of God. I'm talking about the process from the promise to the fulfillment and the pressing it's going to take to get there. So one, what is he going to do? Separate you. Two, what is he going to do? Make you a blessing to others. And what did God, what did Elijah see during this time? He seen God's faithfulness, even to the point where it said this. And I want to, I just want to read this scripture real quick. First Kings 17, 14. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste. Neither shall the cruise of oil fall until the day that the Lord sendeth rain upon the earth. God was speaking to Elijah when he went into the widow's house. The widow had nothing. She was barren. She had some meal and she had some oil. And that's all that she had. And a son that was on the brink of death. And Elijah says, make me some food. She's like, I, I don't have he said, trust the Lord. He's going to send rain upon the earth. The meal will not end. And the oil will not run out. And you know that what that shows me? That God is not going to fail us. And the oil is a type of the Holy Ghost. What do we need to continue on this journey from A to Z? From the promise to the rain and the fulfillment. When we're under the pressures of life, we need the word of God, which is the meal of God truth of God and we need the oil the power of the Holy Ghost to get us to keep going and moving forward Amen. even in the face of death so you know what happens her son after God moves in her life and the oil doesn't run out she makes so much food she can feel, feed the neighbors God is going to do something in your life so great that even the people around you are going to be affected by it. Amen. It's going to be an overflow. An overflow on the job. An overflow in your family. An overflow. But he had to trust the Lord. He could have quit at the brook. He could have said, no, I'm just not going to move forward anymore. Let's stay stuck and stagnant. God doesn't want to stagnant people. That's right. He wants a people, a people that will continually press in and believe him and trust him. And then what happened? Actually, after God moves, and it's such a great move. Listen, after every great move of God, the enemy will come to destroy. Let me tell you, when you walk out of this building today, I can pretty much guarantee that the enemy will move and try to steal everything that God is trying to put in your heart. And most of the time, he uses those closest to us. So look to your neighbor and say, I love you. I love you. <laughs> the enemy will not use you to steal from me today. But God, you know what happens? The son, after the move of God, the son ends up dying. The son ends up dying. And Elijah brings him outside and lays him down. And he prays three times. How many times? Three times. The third year, the rain is coming. Three times he prays. There's got to be something in the resurrection power yeah. of Jesus Christ. God then raises up the young man from the dead. I'm talking about the process. Look, serving God is an adventure. And we can be a part of the adventure or we can reject the adventure. But God wants, look, God wants you to be able to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. He wants you to experience that. He wants you to experience your children coming back to the Lord. Hallelujah. He wants you to experience others being saved and watching their lives transform about you. I mean, honestly, I can't imagine what my mom watched from shooting heroin under a bridge to who I am today. Thank you. Honestly. Let me just be honest about it. And this was the same thing. He, they trusted in God and they watched this young man get on up out the grave. I'm believing God to get some people up out of the grave. Yeah. And maybe even as a church, we could get stuck in a rut and we need to get on up out of the death and the buried and get on God wants us and to be a people that believe I hear a sound of an abundance of rain. <coughs> Hallelujah. And then 
to the battle at Mount Carmel. And he goes and he calls down fire from heaven. This is an adventure. I don't know about y'all, but if I seen some young man getting up on out, out the grave, I would be like, whoa, what's next, Lord? What are we going to do next? And he calls him to a battle at Mount Carmel. Once again, face to face with Jezebel and Ahab. And we see that there's 80, 850 false prophets of God at this battle. And Elijah. Could you imagine the fear that could have gripped his heart? He said, we're going to both call on our gods. Remember, they were trusting in false gods. And whoever fire falls down from heaven, he is God. I'm not going to go through the whole story. It take way too long. So they both call those, the false prophets go, and they call, and they call, and they call, and nothing's happening. And he basically even says, what is your God in the bathroom? That's right. <laughs> it's not coming. <clears throat> they even got to the point of violence where they were cutting themselves. And they not coming. But then goes Elijah, and he repairs the altar. And I just want to, I want to state this real quick, because if we want rain, if we want God to move, we need to come back to the altar, meaning we need to come back to Jesus. We need to come back to believing in his sacrifice. We need to come back and access what God provided on the cross. We need to take that which is ours. We need to take peace. We need, and, I, and look, he already gave it to you. Yes. So it's not in a bad way. I'm going to take it, Lord. No, God, you died to give this to me. Yes. And you said that I can have it. We need to repair that which has been broken down through generation of generation and repair and come back to it. Look, maybe in our own lives, we have turned to other things. And you know what the Lord is saying this morning? Come back to me. Come back to me and let me rebuild you back up yeah, come back to the altar come back to the sacrifice and you know what happened when elijah did that he called fire down from heaven and it fell and it consumed the sacrifice what god is about to do is consume you in every way shape and or form yeah. Said, 
There is nothing. And he said, go again. Go again. I want to challenge us as a church to look with eyes of the Spirit and not to look with what our natural eye sees today. For your family and for your children and for this church and for your job and whatever you need for your healing. I don't know what you came in with this morning. But I want to challenge us as a church to go again. Do not quit. I haven't seen this thing change in my life. Go again. I haven't seen my family member come. Go again. Go again and again and again and again. He said go seven times, which means it is finished. It was complete at Calvary. Seven means completion. Jesus already did it. So go again and get what he has for you. Amen. Get what he has for you. Go again. Persevere again. I don't think I can. Press in again. I, I'm not worthy to worship. Neither am I. Go again. The blood of the Lamb. Look, what we experienced this morning in the presence of God, you can have all the time. I can have all the time. And the devil will lie to you at that door and say, you messed up too much. Don't lift your hands. Yeah. Literally in worship, he will roll the tape of every mistake. To get us distracted. But I thank God for the blood of Jesus yeah. Christ. Thank you, Lord. So I'm not worshiping because I'm worthy. I'm worshiping because he is worthy. Amen. And because the blood of the Lamb has made me free. Yes. Through you I run. Through you I dance. Through you I'm free. Through him. It's all through him. Yes. This whole story of Elijah, it was all through him. Yeah. Through him and a wicked generation, through Christ and what God was calling him to. Listen, there is a call upon our lives to press in, press past, under the pressure of life in this world that we would experience the rain. And we can reject it. God help us not be a church or a people that rejects the rain. Yeah. That is comfortable living in drought. <coughs> that is comfortable living in famine. <coughs> being led by our own desires. God help us to be a people that see miracles like Elijah. That see the dead raised and see the fire of God fall down from heaven. And Naya, if you will. 1 Kings 18, 44 says, and it came to pass, if you would stand with me. Thank you, Jesus. If it came to pass, yeah. at the seventh time, he said, behold, that means he's seen it with his eyes. Behold, there arises a cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, go up, say to Ahab, prepare thy chariot and get down that the rain not stop thee. And it came to pass in the meanwhile, the heaven was black and the clouds and the wind. And there was a great rain. There was a great rain. I think the call of the Spirit is come again. <laughs> Sabrina spoke it before I even came up here. One, position our eyes back on Jesus. Yes. Some of us, and I'll put myself in there, need to refocus. Yes. Let's get relined up with Jesus. Yes. Relined up with his word. The Spirit is saying, uh, there's a sound of an abundance of rain. I want to do it for you. I will do it for you. But we need to reposition ourselves. Get our hearts lined back up and let the attitude of our heart be, I believe you, Lord. And here I am again. I will press past and press in past.
was a great rain. So if you need to come to the Lord again, there's something that has been press, pressing upon your heart to believe God for, and maybe we stopped. I want to encourage you to come to the altar. He's calling us to come and say, here I am again. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. God, you come. God, you come in this time, Lord God, and pour out your spirit, oh God. God, I thank you, Lord, for your word that is truth, that is right, that is life. God, I thank you, Lord, that you want to pour out your rain, and you will pour out your rain, oh God. God, that if we are in a season of drought, oh God, or famine, Lord God, and we are hungry and we are in need, Lord God, that you have come to fulfill every need in our lives, Lord Jesus. God, and I pray, Lord, that you would come and you would quicken us, oh God, and you would pour out your spirit like a great rain, and it would be greater than we could ever have imagined, Lord. God, I pray that you would have your way. Help us to continuously come. Yes. In Jesus' name.